Next at 10, a historic decision 2019 in the Treasure Valley. Boise voters hit the polls in what was widely considered one of the most fiercely contested races in capital city history. In Caldwell, a race for one last city council seat has the eyes of the entire community with two candidates whose views and road to get here are worlds apart. One vote on each ballot, two Treasure Valley cities. Who will come out on top? The final night of the 2019 election will answer just that. The News at 10 starts now. You're watching Idaho's News Channel 7. This is the News at 10. Welcome to the special decision 2019 runoff election edition of the News at 10. In the next 30 minutes, we're going to bring you full live coverage of these two historic races that happened in the Treasure Valley tonight. We begin in Boise, where incumbent Mayor Dave Beter just moments ago conceded the race to challenger City Council President Lauren McLean. Let's get right to Joy Prechtel. He joins us from what is no doubt a jubilant McLean headquarters. Joey. Yeah, Mark, right now we are at the Gem Center for the Arts where Lauren McLean is having her campaign party. And right now I'm joined by Lauren McLean. And Lauren, I just want to ask, you just got up and addressed your supporters. What was your message to them? My message was that we've come far, built a community together, but we have so much work to do. And I'm going to need everyone, both people that are here tonight, but of course people across this community that are ready to roll up their sleeves to t have conversations and, and chart our course moving forward. And now, as the results came in, uh, you had a commanding lead throughout the night. How does it feel when, I mean, you can just look at the map behind you, you see the precincts. How does it feel to see that you had this much support in this race? It's real. It's surreal and it's incredibly humbling and I feel deeply grateful. Now. One of the things you told your supporters was that the mayor had just called you. What can you share from that conversation? He congratulated me and we look forward to meeting soon. Now, what is your, I guess, what, what is your message for the mayor? I mean, he served the city for 16 years. What do you have to say about him now that his run as mayor is all over? Of course, and even, you know, in the city club forum and other places, I've said we've come so far as a community. We have new challenges but I'm deeply grateful as this community is to all that Mayor Beter has done for our city for the last 16 years. Now you launched this campaign about seven months ago, back in May. What has the last seven months been like for you? They have been, and it's been an incredible journey. You know, as I said up on the stage, when we, when we announced, you don't know what's gonna happen. We had to hope for the worst, but prepare for the, or hope for the best and prepare for the worst. And, what I found is that the people across the city obviously responded, but we're hungry for a conversation, a leader that listens. And those stories that I've heard, whether it be in listening sessions at the doors or even before and after forums, anywhere else I've been, um, I carry with me and have shaped my thoughts and even deeper love for this city that we're all so blessed to live in. Now looking ahead to when you do take office, uh, obviously everyone looks at the first 100 days. Do you have a plan? Uh, what, what is your plan for that, those first big days? Yeah, and you know, this transition will be half the time it typically is because of this runoff. So we know we've got a lot of work to do right away. And of course, in the first 100 days, I want to work with a, ha a housing task force to come up with some solutions and policy ideas that we can put into place or at least share with the public. Um, to get feedback on to see if we can uh, more urgently address affordable housing. And of course, you know, as I've said, I want to reset relationships and work regionally around a vision of le with leaders for transportation. So, you know, person by person, I'll be having conversations and laying the groundwork for that. Now, Peter has faced challengers in the past. What made your campaign different from theirs? I would say the moment is different as well. Our city has come far, much has changed, and the voters, I think, recognize that we're at a crossroads and we have a lot of new challenges, and they were looking for fresh perspective and new solutions. All right, well, Lauren, thank you so much for joining us. For now, we're gonna to toss it back to you in the studio. All right, Joey, thanks a lot. And now it appears, and in fact is, the end of a 16-year era at Boise City Hall. Our Joe Paris is tracking this election. He is with Dave Beter's group tonight, and let's take you downtown live to Joe. Joe? 
Well, Mark, there's uh, there's definitely some disappointment in this room. Again, as Joey just mentioned, Dave Beater about 15, 20 minutes ago called Lauren McLean and he uh, he congratulated her. And uh, that's all that's all his campaign was able to tell me about that phone call. My next question for the campaign was, okay, so what happens now? Well. Clearly there is disappointment in this room, but the campaign tells me that they're now moving forward and they're concentrating on positive things. They tell me at this point, they know that they do have a lot of things to celebrate. All the accomplishments that the city has had over the last 16 years. The writing was on the wall though. The campaign tells me they were keeping a close eye on those figures early on. They saw that early lead and uh, they, they kept a close eye on it, but a lot like 30 days ago, back in November, McLean, she got out to that early lead early on in the night and she was able to make maintain that. Uh, in terms of the party here, the turn of the atmosphere, some people have started filing out, but you can see here, there is still a group here behind me. They're talking and uh, some of them are sharing memories about the last 16 years. Quite frankly, a lot of people are talking about the race that happened over in Caldwell, which Misty will tell us about in a few minutes. But again, we can confirm again, the Beater campaign telling me that about 15, 20 minutes ago, they called Lauren McLean. Mayor Beater wanted to congratulate her on the race. Uh, I know they'll be talking again soon. For now, though, the Beater campaign, they tell me again, they're celebrating here tonight. They say they're very happy with a lot of things that happened over the 16 years. They tell me they're not just celebrating what Mayor Beater accomplished, but the entire city. If you think about 2003, right before Mayor Beater came into office 16 years ago, the city of Boise was a much different place than it is today. A lot of things have changed over the last 15, 16 years. Mayor Beater says he is proud of a lot of the accomplishments the city has had. Mark. All right, I want to bring in Dr. Stephanie Witt. She's a longtime poli sci professor at Boise State University. Joe just mentioned 16 years ago, City Hall mired in all kinds of issues. Uh, there was public on uh, did not trust City Hall. How do you put this all in perspective? Well, uh, First of all, I think I think everybody wants to thank the mayor for all his years of service, uh, and it's not an easy job. And he did it for 16 years, and the city's had tremendous growth, uh, a lot of good things happening to the city. Mm -hmm. But apparently, the voters were ready for a change. They're frustrated at some things that uh, we've we've heard the candidates talking about tonight: the cost of living, the housing, the transportation issues, which by the way, the mayor doesn't really have anything to do with, right. but those are frustrating to voters and I think they were ready for uh, a new approach. And um, so I, a, a couple things about the race. The turnout is, is quite remarkable for a uh, special election like this, a runoff where it looks like it's gonna be a little over 30%. Right. Um, it was 40% in the general ele election in November, which is also very high for a city election. Mm -hmm. So. Clearly, the voters were interested and motivated to come out and tell us what they wanted. I got a chance to ask the mayor if he were to lose, what would the transition be like? He said it's going to be great, mm -hmm. very professional if that happens. She said that she's going to be able to continue yeah. to work with Beater. Bygones are bygones. And boy, uh, to your point, what a transformation this city has had under his watch over mm -hmm. those 16 years. Well, a tremendous amount of growth. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen the downtown core in particular really transformed from a lot of empty lots uh, between right. Front and Myrtle, and now they're filled with uh, various kinds of businesses and, and uh, industry. So those, those things uh, are remarkable, and, and you know, we've developed a national reputation. Right. A lot of good things. A lot of the ethics problems have been sorted out mm -hmm. uh, during the Beter uh, administration. They both have to get to work right away after right away. the election to get the transition ready right. so that she's ready to, to go. All right, we'll check back with, in with you in a few moments, Dr. Witt. In the meantime, the other race tonight and today in Caldwell, where former state senator and leadership at the House, John McGee, won the final city council seat with a 61% of the vote to Angeline Beachler's 39%. Our Misty Inglet has been in Caldwell all day, and he has the man who was headed back to public office after a hiatus. Misty? 
Yeah, so Mark, you just mentioned it there. McGee, the same results as in November, comes out on top. He had about 60% of the vote with just over 2,000 total votes. To Beachler's about 39% with just more than 1,300 votes. And I have him with me. We're going to get to him in just one second. But first, I want to make a quick mention of the voter turnout for this race because it was actually really interesting and a little bit surprising. They had a higher turnout for this runoff one ballot item election than they did in the original election back in November. In November, they had just shy of 3,300 for total voter turnout, and today they had more than 3,400, 128 more people turned out for this election. So something pretty interesting there and something that we weren't really expecting. Now I'm going to bring John McGee in here with me. He's going to talk to us as the new councilman elect. First of all, John, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate you joining us and taking a few minutes. Yeah. And I want to first just get your thoughts on this little bit of a roller coaster. We yeah. thought we had a win, a possible runoff, then a runoff, and now a for sure win. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, it's been a crazy few weeks with the original election and we won the original election, or at least we thought we did. And then to find out we had to do it again. It's 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 been a real roller coaster as, as you described. But what I'm most impressed with is the people of Caldwell have stuck with us, right? We had that election. We went through another month of campaigning, but the people of Caldwell still said, you know what, John, Hannah, we want you in that position. We want you to serve in the city council. And and they voted for us with overwhelming overwhelming majorities both times. And of course, you know, one of the issues with this race for having the runoff was the contested factor between it with some of the contention, the drama surrounding your history with the legislature. Do you feel like that's going to affect you moving forward at all working with the community or you feel like the people really spoke with these votes to say let's move on? Yeah, well, the people spoke right and with we had 61% of the vote tonight and that's an overwhelming majority. And I think what the people of Caldwell are saying is we want to talk about the future. We want to talk about what's going to happen in our community. There's great things happening in Caldwell right now, and I think they voted for me tonight to help continue those great things. And we can now say you are going to be joining the Caldwell City Council. So as you take that council seat, what are your visions, expectations to move Caldwell forward? Yeah, we have such great things going on right now with the Indian Creek Plaza and the College of Idaho. We have all these great things happening in Caldwell. My job as a city councilman is to build on that success, work with Mayor Nancolas and the, the current city council, and we're going to continue to build on Caldwell's success. Last question, you know, how thrilled are you to have the same results and to see that overwhelming turnout for tonight? Yeah, well, you know, it's really humbling. It's really humbling. Um, the people have spoken. Um, they know the facts, but they want to talk about the future. And so I and, and, and my family and Hannah, we're really humbled and honored that they that they chose us. Well, John, thank you so much for taking a few minutes and congratulations on your win. We appreciate it. Just heard from John McGee there. He is going to be filling that last city council seat for Caldwell seat six. 60% of the vote to Evangeline Beachler's 39%. We'll send it back to you in the studio. And again, uh, voters voices have been heard in both Boise and in Caldwell tonight. We are efforting to get an interview with Mayor Dave Beter. We will continue to monitor that situation downtown. And again, it is a final. Lauren McLean will become the new mayor of Boise after the transition. We've got more coverage on the special runoff edition of the News at 10 after this. Stay with us. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, the final night of decision 2019 has been most newsworthy, involving two runoff elections in Caldwell and in Boise. Both have decided. Former State Senator John McGee is back in public office after a long layoff. He defeated Evangeline Beachler 61-39 in the race for the last city council seat. And in Boise, the mayor runoff between incumbent Dave Beter and City Council President Lauren McLean, who defeated the 16-year mayor in a resounding fashion. Let's go back downtown to our Joey Prechtel, who remains at the headquarters for McLean. Joey doesn't look like they're going home anytime soon. Oh uh, yeah, that's probably a safe bet there, Mark. Uh, as you can see behind me, still a very lively crowd here at McLean's headquarters. Uh, she got done talking to her supporters not too long ago, maybe about 20 minutes just before the 10 o'clock hour where she addressed them. She thanked them for all of their support throughout this campaign uh, where you know she announced that she was running for mayor back in May of this year. And since then, she's continued to knock on doors. She's held many listening sessions. 
and she got up there you know you could tell that Lauren was a little emotional just by seeing the overwhelming support not just from the voters today at the polls where she did get about 65 percent of the support from the voters in the city of Boise but also just seeing the crowd here tonight all here to support her uh, she said once she was able to actually get on the stage she said it was almost a little overwhelming to see just how many supporters she had um, of course the work is going to just keep going from here uh, but for now we're going to toss it back to you in the studio mark okay you can see at the bottom of the screen there uh, she uh, with a resounding victory let's go to the other side of boise where our joe paris is at the Dave Beter camp and a much different situation there, Joe. It is different, Mark, but it doesn't feel like I thought it would in this room. The Beter campaign uh, telling me that they, they've moved on to celebrating the 16 years that uh, Mayor Beter served the city of Boise, but they tell me they're not just celebrating Mayor Beter's career. They're celebrating all the accomplishments that have happened since 2003. Uh, before Mayor Beter took office 16 years ago, the city of Boise, the Treasure Valley, it looked a lot different than it does today, and that's why the, the Beter campaign tells me that, of course, they're disappointed. There's a lot of disappointment in this room, but they are looking forward positively. They tell me again, they're looking back on all the great accomplishments the city has really achieved together. Um, early in the night, though, Dave Beter was very honest with his supporters here at his party, saying that he wasn't going to sugarcoat the, the early results that were starting to come in. Everybody could see the writing on the wall. Um, and about, again, half an hour ago, Dave Beter called Lauren McLean, and uh, he, he essentially conceded the race. He congratulated her. Uh, we did talk with the Beter campaign to see if he would chat with us here tonight. They said for tonight he's going to spend his time talking with his supporters, sharing stories. I can tell you, Mark, there's been a lot of hugs, a lot of handshakes, a few tears in this room over the last 30 minutes. Again, though, the Beater campaign tells me they're now celebrating all the accomplishments that have happened over the last 16 years. Well said. It'll be interesting to see what's next for this attorney. Will he go back into law? We'll see. All right, Joe. Joe Parrish reporting live for us. We still have more election coverage to come your way, but first, meteorologist Jim Duthie has a look at your midweek and beyond next. From News Channel 7, time for 7 First Alert Weather. Well, today we had a low overcast and patchy fog around. It was dry, didn't have that misty drizzle like we had yesterday, but notice how temperatures changed very little since late last night on into the morning. Today warming up a couple of degrees more though into the upper 30s here in Boise and we're still at about mid to upper 30s right now this evening. But we do have high pressure that's strengthening over the area and that's resulting in dry conditions. A couple of isolated flurries and light showers still moving into the southeastern part of the state this evening. But we have an air stagnation advisory in effect because temperature inversions continue and that extends all across eastern Oregon, southwest Idaho, up into the west central mountain valleys and into the Magic Valley as well. That will last until Friday afternoon. As you look outside right now, you see visibilities aren't too bad like they were last night. Temperature made it up to 39 in Boise today, mainly in the upper 30s in most locations, mid 30s in the mountains, Twin Falls the warmest at 42 degrees. But there is a storm system moving into California right now. That's going to pass south of us, heading across the Great Basin and the southwest. And there's a little ridge of high pressure building into Idaho. That'll keep things dry overall, but a lot of moisture still in the valleys. And as that storm moves inland, it's going to take some snow through Nevada, nudging up pretty close to southern Idaho on through Wednesday night and Thursday morning. And then it pulls onto the east. We stay dry on into Friday, but right ahead of another storm system moving into the northwest this time. Time. And so that'll shake up the inversion a bit by Friday and then we'll start to see more clouds and showers moving in for the weekend. Mainly rain showers in the valley, snow showers in the mountains. For the Magic Valley tonight, low 30s in the upper 20s in some locations, patchy fog and tomorrow mostly cloudy skies with temperatures in the upper 30s to around 40 degrees. Mountain areas, a little sunshine in the central mountains in the afternoon, not as much fog around. Temperatures in the upper 30s to near 40, but Fairfield still socked in with fog and low clouds and cold cold air. And for the Wollong Valley and the West Central Mountain areas, low to mid 30s tomorrow afternoon with patchy morning fog, mostly cloudy in the afternoon. Council about the same thing at 38 degrees. And in the Treasure Valley, we'll look for temperatures tonight in the low 30s, warming up to near 40 tomorrow. Areas and pockets of fog tonight, tomorrow morning, then mostly cloudy tomorrow during the day with a high of 41 in Boise. Not much change on into Thursday, but we do start to see a little bit of a break by Friday. Party cloudy skies, 45 degrees, warming up a bit. Winds picking up a little bit ahead of that storm approaching. 
and that spreads rain in Friday night. Scattered showers on Saturday and into Sunday. The game at Albertson Stadium on Saturday might see a few showers. I think most of them will hold off until the evening. Sunday it winds down, and by Monday and Tuesday, party cloudy and cooling off again down to the upper 30s. Here's Will with sports. All right, thank you very much, Jim. This week's college football playoff rankings revealed earlier this evening. Boise State ranked 19th this week. Memphis is the highest ranked group of five school at 17. They'll play 20th ranked Cincinnati for a second week in a row Saturday in the AAC championship game. Remember, the highest ranked group of five conference champion earns a spot in the Cotton Bowl. If Memphis loses to Cincy Saturday and Boise State wins, things could get interesting. Day game, temps in the 40s, and the chance to celebrate a Mountain West championship. Where else would you rather be, Bronco Nation? Boise State 7-0 all-time in Boise against Hawaii. The Broncos have had low 20,000 fans in each of the last two Mountain West championship games the past two years. Coach Harson hoping for a few more this time around. Yeah, you go back. I mean, I don't, I don't think we've hit over 30,000 in a championship game. And the whole point every single year of every team is to play in a championship, right? Why not be out there and finish it? Be a part of something. You know, if you haven't had something, um, I don't know, positive maybe or, or something inspirational in your life in a while, come out to a championship game and be a part of that. Come out in the field. You know, hopefully we have a chance to win the game and be a part of it. Certainly the time is not an issue. There's no reason Albertson Stadium for a championship game. This is the third year in a row, so I'd say the third time's the charm. Let's get everybody out there packed and set a record. Kick off Saturday on the blue set for 2 o'clock. Join us for an early edition of the Bronco Roundup Game Day Show Saturday morning at 9 a.m. 5A girls hoops tonight. Mountain View hosting Boise. Pick things up in the third quarter. Future Utah U. Peyton McFarlane cleaning up on the offensive glass. Brave up 27-23. Back comes MV Layla Science. The hoop. And the harm, it's a one-point game to the fourth we go. Ali Garica Badia buries the triple. Boise with a big road win, 54-51 the final. We're back with more news after the break. Welcome back to Election Night on Idaho's News Channel 7, rejoined by Boise State Professor and Political Analyst Dr. Stephanie Witt with some analysis on tonight. You're 10,000 feet above the air. You're looking down and seeing what happened here. What's your first blush? Well, we got the same results that we did in the initial election, right? right? So no, no reverse order, you know, the people right. who won then won tonight. And both victories were by uh, the McGee victory in Caldwell and uh, McLean's victory here by a wide margin. Mm -hmm. So the real definitive results. So are you telling me not really any surprises for you? Well, you never know till you have the elections while you play the game right. instead of just going off rankings. And it's, so yeah. you never, you know, there was an election in Eagle uh, many years ago where the person who came in second in the general election won mm -hmm. in the runoff. So it can go the other way, but tonight what we saw was a, a reaffirmation of the original vote. This is going to be a hard one to answer in 30 seconds, but do you think this signals a shift in the direction for Idaho's capital city? I don't know that the direction will change dramatically, but I think the voters made it clear they were ready for a fresh face and um, a change. Boise's first ever elected female mayor. Yes. Tonight, it happened. History made in downtown Boise. Yes. We're back after this.